Hey, Dawn. Okay. Okay, folks, it's 3.15. We will... Um, if everybody who... Um, can we change over to the laptop screen, please? Thank you. Okay, you're all muted. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to change glasses real quick <laughs> so I can see you. It's one of the problems of getting old is uh, that you need two pairs of glasses if you actually don't want to have a, a crook neck. Um, bifocals just don't work for me. Okay, hopefully everyone's here for the leaders meeting. If not, you're going to have an interesting time. I will encourage you to become a, a volunteer leader. Uh, we have awesome volunteer opportunities uh, for leaders of all sorts. So I would highly recommend getting into leading your projects or your chapters. I wish to thank our sponsors and uh, I wish to thank Sam. I've actually grabbed the London chapter um, slide deck. Um, He's a, I was chopped a, he's a board member for a start. Um, I also, he creates fantastic resources, including the, uh, the chapter slide deck, which we'll talk about, um, which thanks the local sponsors. And for us, it's these wonderful people. Um, so please thank you to all of them. Visit their booths and do say hi. Um, there is a, a, a passport type of thing where you go get stamps. And it puts you in a running for a prize, which mostly seems... It's a raffle, is it? Oh, okay. Um, upcoming events. We've got AppSec San Francisco coming up in September. We've got a dev day there. It's on the Wednesday. So if you've got developers, and we've got a track just for developers, and then they can come to the main um, uh, event itself. Uh, App days, AppSec days in Singapore. Uh, Lost Con in Texas, Benelux in the Netherlands, and the Project Summit. How many people are project leaders here? Awesome, awesome. Um, the Project Summit is looking very, very good. It's at um, Centre Parks, which I think you've, uh, some of you have been to before, and um, I think it'll be really, really good. It's going to be led by Star, who's back there. Yeah. Did you just shorten the project summit by a single, by a day? Um, I I have advanced dyslexia and so what is it? Is it? Is it three days? Okay. 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 So everyone needs to get their act together to do something in three days. Uh, if you're not a member. Uh, I won't hold back the announcement any longer. You've got to become a member by the end of the time. Uh, the AMS, which we've got coming up, we'll talk about it a little bit. You can become a financial or you can become a contributing uh, or complementary member. Um, you just need to be a member. If you want to manage your project, you want to manage your chapter, uh, you need to be a member of OWASP. Okay, so um, unfortunately around 60% of all leaders are not members, which is... Um, Odd. <laughs> and we're fixing it. <laughs> so, um, but yes, uh, I'm a lifetime member. Ta -da. Um, I would highly recommend it's a great value. If you've been around OWASP for 10 years, it pays for itself. So, yay. Uh, my 10 year anniversary at um, OWASP for Life membership is next year. Um, so, it was worth it. Um, been around. I was for like 21 years. Anybody want to become a corporate member? Yes, yes. Um, please see Kelly at the reception desk, at the re registration desk, and uh, she'll happily have a conversation with you about becoming a corporate member. There's me. I'm the executive director of IWAS. Uh, I'm also the co top 10 co-lead. Um, we do have an announcement about that, which I'll talk about after we've had a chat with you guys. Um, yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, Star, do you want to just quickly introduce yourself? Very good. Um, so if you're going to DEF CON, um, do look out for the XR Village. Is it going to be there this year? Okay, very cool. Um, so OWASP has never been healthier. We've got a very healthy bank balance, which is always good for a non-profit. Okay. Um, we're likely to make a, yes, very good. <laughs> um, we've got 8,118 members, which is our highest ever. However, 1,674 of them are complementary members, of which probably 1,574 are illegitimate. Um, so we're going to be weeding those out over the next few months. Um, we've had a few problems with those. But even when you take that away, we've had historic highs of paid membership. Okay, um, We've got 226 projects and 282 chapters, but the most importantly is we've got active projects and active chapters. Our goal is not to shut anything down. Our goal is to keep it going and revitalize it. So if you need any help, we're going to provide the resources you need. Um, Vision and mission, I would, I, I want to keep most of the time for you guys. Okay? So I'm just going to go for information. Um, leaders must be members. I've already mentioned that. Um, you've got to do it by basically August 31st. We were trying to do it like by the end of quarter three, but what's happened is that, um, Cloudflare, which is what our member portal sits behind, has an application component that does our authentication and access control. And Cloudflare are depreciating it, so it's going to break our member portal and possibly some other parts of our website too. Um, so we're going to be implementing an AMS in multiple stages, and at the very least the membership and chapters side of things will be implemented by August 31st, cross fingers hope. Um, we're looking at two finalists at the moment and uh, just doing best and final offers. Once we've got the best and final offers in, um, we will be signing a contract. Expenses. How many people have actually ever bothered to submit an expense? Yeah. Okay. All leaders are eligible to submit an expense if you have an expense. So what we want to do is make sure that um, you get paid reasonably quickly. We do a pay cycle every two weeks. So our terms are net 30. So if you accidentally just posted it on the day that we've just done a run, it could be two weeks before it gets processed and then it'll take three to five days to hit your account. Okay, so do give us a little bit of time. Um, you've got to submit your expenses within 60 days of incurring them. It, yes, this is actually the expenses policy. Yep. Um, the reason for that is is that um, if we have a, like a really old one, it needs to come to me for an exception, and I slow things down. Um, I'm probably not going to deny it, but please get them in within 60 days. Uh, and reasonable expenses. How many people here run a large chapter? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, a reasonable expense for a large chapter is very different to a reasonable expense for uh, a small chapter. Now, what we try to do is encourage uh, folks to get a value for money from uh, not only their environment, you should always be looking out for a local sponsor um, to help you uh, cover your expenses. To give you an example, OS London, we've never seen an expense claim. They host a meeting for 300 people every month. I don't know how you do it. It's amazing. Um, but obviously because of the, the numbers of people who show up, it's really worth it to the people who are hosting. So uh, those sort of bartering arrangements are our favorite because then the, uh, the location is covered. Often the food and beverage is covered. But what we're trying to say is, is that if you're going to buy everyone a steak dinner and... Um, several top-shelf flickers, 
um, we're probably not going to pay it. So what we need you to do is just sort of bring it back to beer and pizza or whatever's the equivalent in your country, okay? Um, we're not interested in having expensive dinners. Andrew, can I just say something? Yes. Basically, based on the success of OWASP London chapter. So we've never claimed expense for, for the drink. So, um, yeah, Andre. Just once. Just once. once, yeah, just once. Yeah, and that was an exception. Uh, and because uh, that was our 20th anniversary, and uh, we uh, we had to get a cake. Yeah, oh, that's fair. That's <laughs> so fair. we celebrate the 20th anniversary of Obas Chapter. We Obas Blanda. We've been going since 2004, which is great. But here's how I figure out how not to claim any money from the foundation. Because don't forget, we are a charity. We're a non-profit. And yes, if you have no way of finding uh, money, you come to the foundation. But where do you find money? Right behind you, there's an exhibitor hall. Uh, lots of companies go and talk to them. If you run an OWAS project, OWAS chapter, go and talk to these people. These are the sales guys who have huge sales and marketing budget, and they're actually looking for a Novas chapter that they can help and to pay for their food and drink, sponsor them, provide them uh, with a venue, because we run some of our meetups in their offices as well. So this is easy. So I understand not in every country there are big companies, but while you are here, grab the opportunity. Talk to the sponsors. They're awesome guys, and I guarantee you there will be people who will be ready to help to pay for your bill, provided in exchange you give them a banner and a logo at the beginning of the meetup and thank, thank them for the, their contribution. So, Sam, on a practical level, do you run a separate Obas London account where you move all the money or are you just not to bill no, to the companies? No, no. Uh, Ask the sponsors to, to buy it. To pay the bill. Do, we do not touch the money. As, as the leaders, no. we're not allowed to touch any money. So we don't, there's no account. Yes, we can expense things. We can pay for things ourselves. And then we reimburse through OWASP. So the moment you pay yourself, you have to get it from OWASP. Yeah, yeah. So with sponsors, I just go to sponsors and say, hey, we're running this event. Can you please provide us beer and pizza? Mm -hmm. And you can bring your swag. Yeah. And it works all the time. Dirk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're already. Right. Yeah. Them and then they ask the company to offer the meal, the complimentary meal at the end of the event. So yeah. That's the way we do here in Lisbon, and it's a good way so far. Yeah. Come on, Kevin, please keep the swearing down to like 10 words. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, sending a mail to you, Andrew, uh, mm. a while back about uh, there was an uncertainty about travel re reimbursement policy, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yes, Has that been policy. clarified? You wanted to take it to a committee? Yeah. Uh, just asking. Yep. No, um, we do need to work and on the travel policy that is fair and reasonable. Yep. Andrew? Yeah. That's Yeah. Okay, so there's a pre-approval for two hundred and fifty dollars. So if you're spending less than two hundred and fifty dollars, just expense it. Do we expect that any two hundred and fifty dollars minus under two hundred and fifty dollars expense is reasonable? Yeah. Because we were arguing with people about parking tickets and things like that. Um, so if Andrew? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Anish? Anish? Yeah, I have like uh, uh, two questions. One is, uh, I think sometimes the voice is a little faint, so if you can actually be close to the mic, uh, that's a request if, if it's possible. Okay. Uh, the second question, uh, uh, more important, uh, if uh, if you're presenting a talk at any of the OS conferences, right, and I'm talking on behalf of projects, right, uh, 
Mm-hmm. Are those eligible for reimbursement or it's yes. only for the chapters? No, no, it's for projects, events and chapters. Um, so we don't get a lot of project expenses, uh, but we do have projects here like the CRS project and others who have their own forms of funding. Um, uh, just the other day, um, I approved a rather large expense um, for the SAM project. Um, and it's just a matter of coming to me. I mean, that's essentially the pre-approval process is come to me, ask for the like permission, like you want to get a graphic designer or something like that. Uh, you want to do it through Upwork um, or something like that. Just try to get a pre-approval before you go. Door. Okay. And, and if you're presenting at any of the conferences, uh, is the travel and uh, stuff covered? Um, or so that's up to the project leaders? We are still working on a travel policy. Um, I think what we're trying to do is eventually, like with the project summit, um, we will get to some sort of a grant type situation where um, we, people can apply for travel assistance. But in general, no. Okay, got it. Okay, sorry. Uh, Dawn? Hi. Uh, just so everyone knows, uh, I'm in charge of chapters, and I'm the one who's going to see all the tickets <laughs> for reimbursement. So when some of the things that reasonable expense people brought up, like we will not pay for swag for leaders. We will not, we don't, the only swag and stuff we do for meetings are stickers, pens, or flyers. So for all the people that, even if it's 250 if it's not the norm, put in a pre-approval so there's no... I cannot reimburse anything without a receipt. I need everything. So it it needs to come through if it's not normal expense. Like if it's not for the chapter meeting itself, like food or whatever, you need to get pre-approval. Because even if you're going to get reimbursed and you haven't gotten pre-approval, I can't pay you without documentation. Yeah. So I, I just want everyone to know that because I don't want people to think, well, it was said that. And also for everyone, when you put in reimbursement, we now work with bill.com, especially if it's your first time submitting, you will get an email from, from bill.com to put in your banking information. Yeah. So that will delay your process if you don't answer that email with the banking information. Yeah. Um, so start, oh, sorry, there's a question down the end. Hi. Hey. Um, just sorry, just a quick point. Just bear in mind the expense policy contains a list of things that are considered fair and reasonable. So it's not just, um, ju- you don't need to use judgment. There are, is a list in the expense policy saying what sort of expenses are considered okay as fair yep. and reasonable. Yep. So yep. hopefully that should guide anyone for, if there's lack of clarity. Yep. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with the expense policy, uh, please go to the policies area on the about menu and review the policies that apply to you. So chapter policy, expenses policy. Uh, just hang on, the microphone's coming. Yeah. Um, in, in our words, we have uh, many sponsors, you know. And what happened, uh, uh, as uh, Sam said, uh, I, I already made at uh, once uh, an event and, uh, 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 for local sponsors. And uh, they, they are really useful. I, 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 I think that's very good. But I don't know if uh, exists any policy uh, uh, in OWASP, uh, when uh, we take some pictures with this sponsor that not always a sponsor, this yeah. is sponsoring just the event specific, uh, exists any policy to don't use the logo or don't put the, 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 uh, pictures with the logo from this local sponsor inside to the web uh, page? Um, I, no, we, we actually don't have any rules around that. Um, there's still a sponsor. There's still a sponsor. So just put it onto your chapter page or your project page. Um, we actually had a sponsor for the top 10. We put their logo on the top 10 page. Okay. Okay. Um, so good question. Um, so I just want to reiterate, one of the biggest reasons why expense claims take a long time is we don't have complete details. Make sure that you provide all of your banking information every time. I know that sucks, but it's just the way Jira works. Yeah. Um, and so uh, put your full banking details um, and a copy of the receipt of the thing you're trying to claim and the currency that it's in. Those things really help us get it to you. 
Now, unfortunately, your bank will charge you a fee, and we will reimburse you as much as we can, but it's a little bit difficult for us to work out what your bank fee will be because sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's $5, sometimes it's 2%, sometimes it's $25, and we just don't know. So we can't just gross up the amount, but if you are um, worried about this, what I'd suggest is log a ticket, let us know, and we can probably gross up a future uh, expense claim. This has been kind of Wait. Wait. Can you ask me? Oh, okay. Yeah, just, yep. Happy to hand over afterwards. Uh, on this, uh, we used to do it like this, like one expenses, then we look how much has been cut and add it to the next uh, expense claim. And this has been cut no. starting this year, no. I think. You can't, I'm not, Andrew, can I speak? Uh, let's take that one offline, Christian. Okay, fine yep. with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then a suggestion, yeah. what is very hard for us, I cannot see the tickets of my co-lead. Oh, well. That is, I would like to comment on them and say, yes, I confirm this, this is fine, or here is something else. And that is not possible. If that could be made possible with Atlassian, that would be so helpful. Yeah. You mean a co-leader, right? A co-leader, whoever. I want to be able to share. I, I claim, I do an expense uh, claim for one of my project members, and that person cannot see its ticket. Right. Okay. Yes, they can. If it gets, you can add that person to JIRA, and when it gets put in, it gets assigned to them. So, if you, you, so when staff you put can it do in, that, but I cannot, Don. Yeah. You, you can't copy the when creating. Okay, let's, this is a process issue. We'll work it out with Dawn. I understand what you're saying. Um, there is a level of access that is actually um, uh, a little bit too much, um, which is staff level access, which can see every ticket. So, um, I think, yes, we know it's something in between. Yeah. Just want to uh, give some kind of feedback on uh, the uh, shared cost thing. Um, uh, before COVID, I had really had problems because sometimes there were like 50 bucks or 100 bucks and it was deducted like, uh, if, well, bucks is euros mm. <laughs> in the country where I'm living in. So, uh, and it was uh, deducted like 15 euros. But since uh, after COVID, I had no problems anymore. Dawn, if you're listening, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's... It, it, yeah. it, it worked quite good because uh, it's kind of annoying if you just... Uh, um, pay something out of your own pocket, uh, and then uh, you see. I don't know why that came because uh, that was because if you do international transaction at least to the EU, you can cross a shared cost, uh, mm. or I take over the whole cost, or whatsoever. Mm. Do you know the reason why that happened? Um, we changed banks, and Bill.com has their own bank, and so it's really the relationship that Bill.com has with your bank. Okay. That's what's changed. We changed accounting um, partners. So in 2023, the board um, asked us to reevaluate our relationship with our previous uh, vendor, like our previous accountant. Okay. We came up with a, a different one, and so we're with them now. And they have a, a different way of working, which is why we've got Bill.com now. And so it's really about the relationship between Bill.com and your bank. And okay. it varies a lot. So, so I rather don't change the bank uh, account now for reimbursement. That's right. If you've got something <laughs> in zero, that's fantastic. Okay. Thank yeah. you. No worries. Uh, Dawn, did you have a question? Um, yes. There was a person said about adding a local sponsor to the page, which yeah. is a great thing. But also, if you've got sponsors and stuff and you want to do that, put it on the Amplify channel and stuff, and we can, you know, post it on social media, and if you have a picture, it'd be great to post all that stuff on our social media. Yeah. So, No, uh, I think we, we talked uh, this in, in a call previously, but uh, having something like uh, virtual credit cards or things like that, that so there is no people paying and then there is reimbursement, but then the foundation that makes the payment with a virtual credit card and then there is no transaction, there is no, of course, not for every cost, because for small expenses, it might make no sense, but 
Sometimes we need to pay a big amount of money and then the banks will take a lot of money from OWAS and or the people that it's going to receive that. Okay. So a credit card will, a virtual credit card with limits and so on that you can use once and burn it, Mm -hmm. kind of, will be awesome to solve this uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, The American banking system is not quite up to that just yet. Um, So, board, don't use the American banking system. When we come to evaluate (laughs) um, the expense policy, uh, we need to think about that because the CRS project is special. Um, There's a couple of projects that have huge grants, and so they they do have some restricted funding. Okay, projects. Um, STAR is your leader, Um, staff liaison, and basically will help get things done. she asked me to say that you are all awesome. So pat yourselves on the back. Um, honestly, if you type OWAS into a search engine, you're going to get a lot of results for projects like the top 10, uh, ASVS, um, the testing guide, and things like that. And that's no small, um, it's because it's referenced everywhere. Um, so projects are what we're famous for. Uh, it's not necessarily what we invest in, and we're trying to balance that out. So we do a lot of chapter work, but our projects aren't the second-class citizens that they used to be. So do think about ways that you could actually um, improve your product, improve your service, improve your um, code, your documentation. So um, we do want to bring us into the uh, 21st century, where... You know, we are talking about AI. We are talking about modern agile development practices and things like that. Um, I think it's really important that we stay relevant. We've been around for 21 years, um, or actually a bit more, 23 years. Um, if we're still going to be relevant in another 20 years, we've got to keep our projects up to date. Okay? So that includes the OS top 10. So um, do think about ways that it's not 2001 anymore. So do please work on it. Um, We're here to support your journey. The idea of the foundation is to enable volunteers. We're not here to actually do the work. We're here to make your work easier. We've got a bunch of shared resources uh, from Zoom to GitHub to uh, we do have some uh, AWS and um, GCP credits. We do have some Azure credits. So if you want to run a virtual machine up, just ask us and we can probably help you. Okay. Um, we've talked about the AMS. It's coming. I can't tell you which one it is. Um, oh, uh, Anish? There's a question. Yeah, I have, uh, why don't you finish your thought? I'll, I'll ask my question once you're done. Okay. Um, so the new AMS is coming. This will change the way chapters work. Um, we are still yet to work out the migration plan, and we'll be communicating very, very heavily with chapter leaders about what's going to be happening once we know what's happening. Um, We're trying to consolidate our platform and reduce our costs. And so if you're not using Meetup, we're probably going to take Meetup away. But there are some chapters who rely upon Meetup, and we're trying to figure out how do we actually support that use case. Um, So OS London, you get a lot of walk-in traffic from Meetup. and that we don't want that to go away. So we're working on it. Um, so there will be a migration plan. Okay, Arunish? Yeah, uh, again, two questions. One is, uh, uh, is there any documentation of, uh, or, or maybe the workflow, which is defined when you're asking for sponsorship from potential vendors? Like, w- what is the step-by-step process that uh, the leaders can follow? Um, the like where the money should go, how it should be coming, how it's uh, distributed, all that. Okay, so you're talking about... Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Dawn, do you want to address that? I mean, it's just... You click yeah, the donate you, button. Did you say me, Andrew? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I couldn't hear. Okay, so under expense policy, okay. everything is written. Um the biggest thing about it is, and you can reach out to me in a JIRA ticket, and I can ask any questions you need, or we can get on a call. The biggest thing is uh, all funds, all money must go through the foundation. 
Yeah. And there's a reimbursement pro- process. Now, like what Sam said before, if they're just paying for your food and there's no money being transferred, then that's okay. Yeah. But just to, uh, look at the expense policy list, there's, there is a section under chapter that goes links to it. And if you don't see, find what you're looking for, just, uh, send me a JIRA ticket and I can help you whatever you need. And if we want to set up a call, we can. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. And uh, the second question, I mean, like, it's not related to uh, the conversation, but it's, I think there was a discussion that was happening almost like a month and a half ago, and I think Jason was responding on that, is how do we get access to, like, the IntelliJ IDE for the leaders, for the members? Is that a work still um, fresh I, or that's kind I don't of... Know uh, I don't know where that's up to. Uh, so the question was whether or not we have access to IntelliJ uh, IDE. Um, I actually don't know the answer. I will um, touch base with them and see where we're going. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we've talked about large chapters, uh, student chapters. We're going to be doing a little bit of chapter reform. There's going to be a new chapter policy once the bylaws are sorted. Um, and that will ask students to meet on site at their academic institution. Okay. Uh, we've had a few chapters being created as fake city chapters and they meet anywhere in the city. And so that's a competing chapter against the actual chapter. And we don't want that. We want, we really need, uh, to develop student led chapters. Okay, and we want a, a faculty member, and we want it to be run on site. So a bit of continuity. Uh, there will be a, some special rules uh, for student chapters that give them exemptions from activity during semester breaks, because unlike work, like normal uh, chapters, you can meet 12 times a year. Uh, student chapters, no, you, you might get seven meetings in a year if you're lucky. Okay, so... Um, and if a student chapter meets seven times, we're really happy. So that's going to be hap- um, good. The chapter committee, um, Sam has put together a lot of resources for uh, the... Uh, uh, if you go to the committees under About, click on the chapter committee, and click on Resources. There's slide decks. There's a suggested, um, uh, you know, set of slides that you should run through that thanks local sponsors, goes through the current events. Um, once we've settled down, I will work with the chapter committee so we can find a way to update that deck every month. Okay? At the moment, it's not updated every month, and it should be. Um, there's also banners, a speaker repository. If you're seeking speakers and don't know where to go, the speaker repository actually has a CSV list of about 60-odd people who are prepared to speak to you. Now, we can't afford to fly them, but they might be able to do something virtually for you, or you might find someone local to you, and uh, that's even better. Yeah, Kev. And I would also say that I thought it was loud enough. I will say that many speakers will volunteer to fly themselves to chapter events or other events based on availability and other factors. So don't be afraid to just simply ask them. Yeah. Another thing on the uh, guest speakers, uh, any of you sitting here in the audience and listening to us online, if you want to offer your own services as a speaker on a particular topic. Uh, it's an open source repository. You can go and add your name and your LinkedIn profile to the CSV file, um, which is uh, highly encouraged. And we currently have speakers in uh, who also can speak in German, Spanish, and French. Yes, there. OK. Um, coming back to the uh, future travel policy. Yes. Uh, in Germany, we are uh, a country where at least the uh, German railway is uh, normally quite affordable. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the past, it was no problem to invite uh, speakers from one uh, spot in Germany to another, which like 
four hours by train or so, which costs then like uh, up to 150 bucks. Will that change in the future? So mm. because it's it's a difference if I ask somebody who has an overs project or has or if I have somebody who's giving an interesting talk or have, has an interesting topic, mm -hmm. there I'm really inviting him because I think the speaker is important. If, to, if to, the to travel chapter. expense is up to $250, I've done that, yeah. you can just use that. Um, uh, well, you need to get that pre-approved because that's not a normal expense. Yeah. And 95% of the time it's approved. Yeah. So, because I've done other ones, but you, you need to okay. get that because that's not a normal expense. So you need to get it pre-approved, and 95% of the time it's approved. Okay. Thanks, Don. Pre-approved mm -hmm. uh, means uh, the both chapter leaders or pre-approved has uh, means uh, getting uh, writing a ticket and then uh, having you approve it. Okay. So what, what I is think it? probably um, we need to clear this up, and I'll, I'll take it offline with you a little bit later. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The short, the short version sure. though is pre-approved is ask for permission. Right. And give a, re like obviously you're not going to know exactly how much a train ticket would cost or so on. Just give an estimate of what you think it is. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, Dawn wants me to mention that if you're doing co-marketing, like you're actually popping off to someone else's event, um, like this happens in LA all the time. They go, they go visiting and do outreach, uh, you know, at ISSA and other types of events. Um, there's a sort of a form of co-marketing. Um, there are some um, issues with some of the things. So we just want pre-approvals for co-marketing. We can actually help promote their event. So it's a positive, net positive in the end. But if you are going to be speaking at somewhere else, we can use Amplify to get your um, message out there as well, and we can also help promote their events. So, uh, I, Andrew? Yeah. Okay, Como, if you're just speaking at another event and it's not, you know, personally, that's not co marketing, but say you're going to have a table, if OWASP logo is going to be put anywhere, you need to get that approved. Yeah. Um, we do have so, tablecloths available. Yeah. And, uh, and also, if you're going to have a booth, there's certain things pre-approval for that. I need notice, like not three days before, because a lot of times I have to get an agreement signed and we have to review it, so I need some time. Yeah. And we're more than willing to do all this stuff. It all comes down to time. Like, you know, if you give me some time, then I, the deliverables they get, we can promote that, I can promote the OWAS, they promote ours, we, like Andrew said, we do it on social media get pictures taken and so on, more than willing to do it, but obviously you can't send it to me three days before. Yep. Okay. Um, one of the things that we have been doing for the last couple of years is switching between um, the left and right-hand coast of the United States. Um, the board has tasked us, um, the foundation, with finding a suitable um, equivalent for the European side of things. Um, now, whether that means we just swap between, say, Amsterdam, Munich, or pick your favorite large hub airport, um, the reality is, is that we're probably not going to be visiting that many um, uh, smaller locations. So for the Europeans amongst you, um, we really do encourage you to run your own AppSec days, uh, maybe even in your own language. You don't need to do it in English. Um, so one or two day events, we really want to get those going. Um, we do actually have a process to create an event. Um, there are timelines. Yeah. I have two questions with the events. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, if the first question about the, the events that, that, that I have, if what happened, uh, you told about the, the traveling things and, and so on. That, so what happened is one of the uh, sponsors want to donate uh, a, the ticket. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter? No. Okay, thank you. This yep. is the first one. And the second one, uh, can I run an event, for example, my chapter is Logroño. Logroño mm. is, a, is a little city, so... Uh, if I have uh, so many people, maybe I have to move the event to Bilbao 
Mm. But the, my chapter is Lebron, Bilbao doesn't have that no, no, chapter. Events are no. totally different to chapters. Yeah, so I can move the event. Uh, Spain, in this case, is an uh, upset uh, day, day in Spain. So mm. uh, we are running this with the Barcelona chapter. Mm-hmm. So we can move to Bilbao if we need yeah, but just give us plenty of notice. No, no, no. I, I, yeah. I know, I know. They have to notice. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and also, uh, it's uh, we can do, uh, for example, a, a meeting in uh, in Bilbao if we are from Logroño. No, no, okay. the, no. So there, you have two different things you're talking about. If you're having a chapter meeting, then that stays in your city or location. Now, if you're in a chapter that there are no other location, no other chapters locally or in that city, just reach out to us and that will be not, probably won't be an issue. Yeah. If you're having, quote, an event, that needs to be a pre-approved, you need to submit a budget and that has to go through the events team. Yeah. They will then research it, but it will not be considered a chapter meeting. And it, there's a big process with that. You have to show what sponsors you have, we, cause it has to have insurance, it has to have the venue name, there's a whole process that has to be done and pre-approved by, uh, the events team. Yeah. Just talk to Lauren, like log a ticket in the OCMS and, um, it'll get you to fill in a bunch of details. Um, yeah. talk to Lauren to get the budget template and just start filling it out. And as you start filling it out, uh, you'll have to go get a quote um, and fill things like if if the place that you're hiring. Uh, it, the, uh, in, in my case, for for this event, I don't have problem with Logroño, uh, and, and it's, it's, uh, we have everything uh, in a good way. But the, the 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 thing is that Bilbao, for example, it's uh, forty minutes from yep. me. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that they don't have a chapter. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, sometimes at, uh, at once they, they they ask me if, if we can do a meeting in. Uh, uh, in, in yeah. I understand that no, but maybe I can ask or, or send a ticket to uh, make for permission, but uh, I don't know. So. Right. Do that. If it's just a meeting, send it to me, and because then maybe we can find someone who lives in that area too for future ones to open a chapter there too. So like you could start it and then we get leaders there, which would be great. There you go. So long story short, Go to the events, browse all events. The top link on the right-hand side is submit your event in OCMS. That's the first step. Um, Lauren will give you, um, you'll have a dialogue with Lauren. Um, There is a thing called events in a box, which describes the entire process of organizing an event. Um, It does appear to be long because it is long. Um, The the reality is, is that organizing an event like this takes a year. Organizing an event for 30 people at a, you know, a, you know like a chapter meeting, it's still going to take you a couple of weeks. So give us time with the OCMS um, tickets. So if you, we've got small events like the Boston Day, the BASC, B-A-S-C. They plan to earn $1.00. That's it. They don't care about making money. So they have very low ticket prices. They get lots of sponsors in to cover their costs. And their entire thing is just to cover their expenses. They're not interested in making money. And that's all we care about too. Okay? So we want to have more events, preferably those that will be profitable. Okay? Okay. Your turn. We do have a couple of questions from... Um, June 73, am I allowed to out you? Yeah, just go ahead. Yep. So June 73 is Christian. Christian's awesome. Um, what are the status of the plans to track funding? They're on a little bit of a hold at the moment. I had a, a board meeting yesterday um, behind closed doors. The board has given me advice. Uh, it's up to me to figure out how to make that advice work. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be jumping... Um, into making a hasty decision with recruiting. Um, But fundamentally, our funding is a little bit on hold at the moment due to circumstances. Yep. Before you run a question about funding, I want to apologize and mention that Bill is in the process of recruiting and creating quite a range of 
Three. Yep. So anybody that's interested, thank you. Uh, any, hello. Yep. So anybody that's interested, please do talk to Bill because he is getting more volunteers for that to support that initiative. Yeah. So Bill's down the back. He's waving his hand. So if you want to volunteer for the fundraising committee, please talk to Bill. The very best committee. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is on our minds. It really is. Um, from our perspective, um, we are preparing. I have a number of Monday.com tasks um, to get the foundation ready to apply for grants. Um, I'm getting some legal advice at the moment, and one of the questions is, if the EU entity is truly independent of the US entity, would that help with getting European grants? Okay, so we're, we're working on it, okay? Um, but it is going to be slower, I'm not going to lie. Um, some things here are HR related and I cannot talk about them. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Jason's last day with the foundation was last Thursday. Um, it uh, is rather unfortunate. Um, that left a lot of balls basically in the air and now they're dropped on the ground. Uh, we're trying to pick them up. Um, Star's going to take some of the things uh, f up. Uh, Christian K uh, Kaplan, who's our IT contractor, will take other things up. And then there are some things that will just go on the back burner, like the grants and the fundraising and things like that. Um, we hope to find uh, a way to reinvigorate our social media, because Jason did all the funny memes on LinkedIn that got a lot of traction. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of interest in memeing, um, so maybe we uh, come up with a weekly meme or something like that. Um, what are his top three initiatives that will be continued? Well, the things that I had tasked him with were fundraising, grant writing, and uh, converting the AMS. And so a couple of those things will be on a little bit of a hold. The AMS is going to steam forward. Um, Star will be doing the actual business requirements and the working with the migration plan, and she's got a lot of history in that area. So I have no qualms whatsoever we're going to get the AMS um, also, the, both of the organizations that we've worked with will provide us a data migration um, person to help us get the data in. Okay, um, I'm going to leave that sponsor slide up there so you can actually thank our sponsors by Googling them or going visiting them. Um, questions from the floor. What haven't you heard that you'd like to talk about? Silence. Crickets. Is there anyone on the... Yes, Dawn. Okay. So I'm going to ask for some help. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't up there, but I'm in charge of chapters and everything with it. Okay. Uh, with everyone being away, me uh, not in Lisbon, no offense to staff, it, I got a lot more done. <laughs> but <laughs> being a lo lot less interruption. However, one of the s bad parts of this was I got reports from Meetup and different things. So at point we had 270 or so. We had almost 45 meetup pages that people have not posted a meeting in over a year. This costs us a lot of money to run these programs. And by going through that, I'm a firm believer in the chapters. I'd rather have 250 active chapters than a list of 320 with not a bunch of chapters. We are one of the organizations that there are not a lot of major requirements to run a chapter, but one of the like 101 is you have to list your meeting either on Meetup or the chapter page. Because the look that it's showing is that people are going to these pages and they're clicking on and there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's not a great look. And if chance, like the group has, you know, things happen, people, you know, it, it shuts down, I can then reach out and get other people to open a group. And yeah. that's what my goal is now since I've done a lot of cleanup this week. But we really, it's real simple, you know, just post it on the chapter page. And if and you don't have to use Meetup, a lot of places don't, which is fine, because we don't automatically give a Meetup page anymore, because it's too expensive. But it has to be listed. Mm -hmm. Like I went into one chapter yesterday, the leaders haven't logged in in three years. Yeah. I can't have that on there. It's just a bad look. Just like and be honest, it's a lot of work to close a chapter. I don't like closing chapters. So 
I really want to expand in a lot of areas. So if you just can log in and post everything where it needs to be. Thank you. Yeah. Dick? I heard the... I heard the argument that is expensive very often. Uh, I ran the uh, meetup uh, for the Hamburg chapter by myself. It was like 60 bucks a year. That didn't appear. I mean, of course, it's money you don't have to spend, and we want to clean up mm -hmm. uh, uh, the chapters if they are stale because it doesn't mm -hmm. provide any uh, value, right? But uh, is that more expensive uh, we for have the foundation? The Oh. We have the pro edition and we have 280 chapters. So when you multiply the, the pro edition price per chapter by 280, it equals about 50,000 US dollars a year. It's one of our largest single bills. Um, the next most expensive is Slack and we are working with Slack to get that down. Um, so we do have some big bills. But that means if I would personally pay for, or if everybody would personally pay, for a meetup account that going to be more uh, is going to be more cheap is going to be cheaper oh, thank you <laughs> than uh, the Oversman Foundation pays for one of the benefits of uh, being in the Ellis Foundation is not only do we take care of your bill you don't have to pay and get reimbursed yeah. um, you get some pro features and yeah. we also get it as well okay no I'm not complaining about what you done uh, mm. for uh, for the chapters I'm c complaining. How uh, Meetup is uh, charging you? What, what yeah. kind of prices? To yeah. So we. Oh, Sam, do you want to talk to that? Okay. So we are a charity, right? And you actually raised a very good point. So if anyone in this room does knows anyone from Meetup Holding Company who is WeWork, maybe you've done a project with them. Please, we need to get in touch with these people and say, look, we are the people who are securing the world. It's very likely that Meetup's team, you know, the wonderful web app and the mobile app, actually using OWASP projects, standards, guidelines, and tools. Mm -hmm. So, as a as a gesture of goodwill, can you provide us with a discount or donate your platform to OWASP because that will be a great press release for them. Yeah, and we're prepared to give them quite the uh, corporate supporter benefits as well. Um, it's not going to be just, um, you know give us a, a, a really expensive thing for free. We we have actually given um, folks a gold or a platinum uh, response. Um, Avi, would you like to come up and talk about volunteering for co uh, committees? Uh, Hey everyone, uh, in case you don't know me, I'm Avi, uh, the chair of the Global Board. Uh, right now, uh, Andrew talked a little bit about some of the committees we have. Uh, the Projects Committee and the Chapters Committee are doing re really well. The Education Committee is being rebooted. As of last night, the Events Committee was formally approved. Uh, there's an interesting process around that, and it's always volunteer driven. The board says strategy, we don't get into that. So we get things done through volunteers running committees. So the events committee basically took on, they set what they want to be doing, they set their charter, and we approve that charter, which is basically policy of what the committee is allowed to do, or what powers they have. We want to enable volunteers to get things done. So that's the events committee, um, whichever, uh, what else we have? So that, that was approved last night. We're also already starting to work on the charter for uh, what I would call marketing committee, but the marketing folks tell me it's called um, communications, communications committee. Um, first act is marketing. Uh, anybody that's interested in that, um, communications and outreach, please do talk to Brian, Brian Reed. He's not in the room right now. Um, point that out. Basically, a committee has to have a minimum of five people on the committee, might be the chair, might be three officers, up to f uh, at least five people running a committee, laying out specifically what the goals and, uh, uh, and actions that the committee want to take, open it up for more volunteers. Of course, all committees are open. The only requirement to be on a committee is, is a to member. be a member. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And step forward and volunteer. 
and well, use use work, right? So that's the yeah. You know, well, that's that, that that's that's the essence of, of volunteerism, right? So that's the uh, events committee. We've talked about the outreach committee. The other committees that we feel should be should exist for which we need volunteers. And this is very explicitly said by the policy that the board cannot do this ourselves. We need volunteers outside. We'll be supported by the board. We'll be supported by staff. But we need to get things done through committees. Um, we mentioned the fundraising committee. Please do talk to uh, Bill in the back around that, about the initiatives around that. Another one is the membership committee. Mm. How to increase membership, member, membership, how to recruit more members, how to increase the value of what a member gets mm. for being a member. Like There's always different stories, different reasons, different motivations to join as a member of OWASP, right? I can start pulling everybody. And by the way, if you are a member and you haven't collected your challenge coin, please do collect it from the OWASP members lounge. The Nilly which, app. The which Nilly is app. just next, on, the, on that, that way. And uh, also, if you're not a member, you can join. And as a part of what you do as a chapter leader, if you're a chapter leader, please do promote a membership because you should lead by example and become a member and uh, also remind your uh, chapter attendees that there are also benefits available for chapter members. We have two recent additions to the uh, uh, member benefits. One of them is a checkmarks code bashing platform is now available to members. If you don't know, if you missed the memo, it is available. And Secure Flag released one of the features, which is a threat modeling module, which is now also available in the secure flag for OWASP members. Yeah, I, I take it back. There's really only one reason to become a member. <laughs> <laughs> Unique challenge coins. Um, so the other committee, and I talked to Andra earlier today. Um, she's hiding down the back. <laughs> um, we really do want to have a uh, diversity committee again. Uh, I think, honestly, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, if you look around this room, uh, we're mostly white, we're mostly men, and uh, we really do need to have a greater diversity of voices, uh, really need to get into Africa. We need to, we've got a really active uh, Indian um, contingent, so I'm quite happy about that. Um, but Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, um, OAS China is its own thing. They're very, very busy, but we've got to figure out a solution for it. So if you're interested, if you're interested in if you're interested in joining and supporting that committee and helping to write the charter and decide what needs to get done, please do talk to me about that, uh, about the membership committee. I don't know if I mentioned Please talk to Matt. Matt, raise your hand. Yeah, talk to Matt about the membership. And that committee will help drive what other benefits should be there. What? How do we get more members? And the challenge coins are probably not the right, just the right answer, but it's cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So those are the three committees that we know of that we want to do right now. If you have other thoughts, like oh, I really want to do a thing, if you go to the website to OSP.org, you go under committees, you find the committee policy. It tells you very clearly you can do this. If there's a thing that you think we want to do, there's an explicit policy of how a process of how you get five people with you or four additional people you lay out what you want to do and submit that to the board to be approved and go off and do that yeah, yeah you want to ask about it you're already answering oh okay, okay excellent so you have another thought about committees i want to hear that <laughs> <laughs> so um sometimes we find people and voluntold them um so uh, i'm trying to convince andrew <laughs> Um, okay, so are there any other questions from the floor before we close up? Yeah, Dirk. One question which I maybe should have asked earlier. Uh, what about the collaboration with the Linux Foundation? Uh, which foundation? Linux Foundation. Um, well, we're an associate member of the Linux Foundation. Um, we were on the OpenSSF board for a while. Um, we maintain friendly relations with them. We are also members of the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, Sen Senelec. Um, is Rob in the room? Um, and we're also members of ECMA. So we're expanding our partnerships with various um, standards bodies, 
uh, the Eclipse Foundation and others. Um, we're having some really nice talks at the moment with the Python Software Foundation. Um, so realistically, we know that OpenSSF might be seen as a competitor, but they're doing a very different thing than we're doing. I'm more asking because of projects, maybe, because uh, they could, f I don't know whether, for example, they would be willing to fund project our project better, because mm. they... Irish. No? No. Um, I mean, we, we, lost, we lost Zap, for example, which is a pity. Yeah. So Zap actually left the foundation, the Linux Foundation. Yeah. And now they're being funded by um, Mark Curfee's company. Ah, okay. So um, it didn't work out for them. It doesn't mean that it won't work out for someone else, but please come and talk to us before you decide to do that because yeah. we actually do do funding for um, projects. The CRS project, you've managed to get grants and therefore you're spending. Um, so same with the SAM project. So um, I was able to, they got significant funding and they've just asked for 8,000 euros and um, they're going to get it. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Bill. Probably not five million a year, which is more than the whole budget. But yeah, we can definitely support that. Yeah. Yeah, we've got around the keynote. Yep, let's go. Okay, so uh, we're finishing up. You said the keynote's on now. Fifty. Fifteen minutes. Okay, we've got fifteen minutes to make it to the keynote. So, thank you so much for attending. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.